Hi guys, it's August 26, 2019 and I'm going to tell you guys about the dangers of pastors who teach that there is no hell, you know? That's very dangerous guys. And you know why? Because God does teach that there is a hell and there's a heaven. That's why the Lord Jesus went to hell, right? When he died, he went to hell, and then he took the keys from Satan, okay? And then the Lord Jesus took back, you know, the power, and now the devil has no more power over anybody because the Lord Jesus Christ took it away from him. Hold on, guys. I'm getting a bit distracted because there's some music in the background. Hold on. I'm going to have to turn it down. Okay, so yeah, oh, just a minute. Okay, I just had to get the cold air on me because it's a little bit hot in this room. Okay, <laughs> I'm just trying to, I'm trying to adjust it. Okay, so it's, a, it's adjusted now. Yeah, guys, so, you know, I'm sure you guys have heard of uh, teachings. You've come across teachings uh, either on TV or on YouTube or wherever, on the radio, maybe maybe even in a magazine or a book of people teaching or ministries just teaching that there is no such thing as hell when there is. And for every time that a person teaches that there is no hell, that person is living on borrowed time because God is giving them uh, every single day that they're alive, God is giving them an opportunity to, you know, to stop teaching these lies because they're they're calling God a liar. You see, these people are teaching from the same Bible where God does say that that there is a hell. But they just want to because they refuse to believe that because God is so loving, it's 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 a, it's impossible for Him to send anybody to hell. See, that's what they believe that because He's so loving that it's impossible for God to send anyone to hell, even though it does say that he does send people to hell. That's their reasoning. There's this one pastor, guys. There's There are many of them, but there's this one um, that I, 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 I never used to watch him, but I did know of, of him because I, I saw a few of his, a few clips, not whole services, but I, I did see a few minutes of of a few of his, his uh, messages. And he is teaching that there is no such thing as hell and that everybody um, everybody just dies. I don't remember what he says what what he said about the wicked I don't know but but he did say that there's no such thing as hell and that but I do I also do remember him saying that people don't go to hell and suffer even even if they did bad things. I do remember him saying that, but I don't remember specifically what he might have said about what happens to them. But he did say that the wicked don't suffer. He says there's no such thing as hell, so, so the wicked do not go to hell. That's what he said. And one time I was watching one of his, his shows and I felt so bad because this guy was standing there teaching. He has like a, a large following and he has this, this crowd of people there. And he, he was just standing there teaching these people lies. And I was so sad and for all the congregation because the camera was, you know, was, was panning on the camera. Uh, the, the camera was panning on the, on the audience. And as, as the camera was going from face to face, from person to person, I, I had such a lot, a lot of sadness because I saw the expression on their faces and the countenance in their bodies. They were so, uh, they're very convinced. They, they, they are... They have a grand sense of security in what this this pastor is teaching. They really believe in the lies that he's saying that there is no such thing as hell, and they're so comfortable. And they, you ha you, you can see the sense of security in their faces because of the lies that they're they're believing in what this guy is saying. And it made me so sad because in my mind I'm like, I can't believe these people in there are so deceived. How can people be so deceived? I don't understand it. How can, how can people who are being taught by a pastor who is teaching the opposite 
contrary to what is taught in the Bible that they're reading, how could they still stay there and choose to believe in what he is saying rather than what the Bible is saying, rather than what the Bible that they own is saying? You see, that doesn't make any sense. And the reason why they choose to stay in those kinds of teachings is, uh, is because they are choosing to believe that because this the person that is teaching them, they believe that that person was placed there by God. So it must be that whatever they're saying makes sense, regardless of what the Bible says. Even like whether the person was placed there by God or not, these the congregation is convinced that because this person is a, a pastor, they may even have a, you know, a, a degree then the congregation believes, well, they really must be a, a person of the Lord because the, the Lord must have given them this job and told them to be a pastor, so they must be telling the truth. So that this is a way that people that are the congregation, this is a way for them to get lost. They, they willfully get lost because they choose to believe what they're saying rather than examining what the Bible says and what they're saying. They, they should say to themselves, hey, this doesn't match up. This does not match up and I don't want to be here. This does not make any sense, so I'm going to go. Because if God is saying this sin needs... If, if God is saying there, there is a hell, then why are you teaching contrary to what is being taught in the Bible that you're teaching from? They need to, um, they need to have the brains and the alertness to think like that. Because that's how they're going to... Be, that's, how go, that, that's how they're going to protect themselves. They're going to protect their souls. Because that pastor who is teaching that there is no such thing as hell, he's already going to hell. Did you know that? He's already going to hell. But for every person that is still alive, there is always an opportunity. Because uh, this pastor, okay, this pastor has been receiving warnings from God. Because the longer, guys, the longer we, we live, the more opportunities that God sends warnings to us to change our behavior. So this pastor has been receiving warnings from God, but he's not been listening. And God has a time for him to be sent to hell unless he changes what he's doing. If he goes to hell, it will be his own fault. He's evil. He's wicked. Okay? One time I was listening to this 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 pastor's uh, show and a caller oh I was listening to it on the radio what, I, I learned about him I think I don't remember how I learned about him uh, either it was either on the I think it was on the YouTube so I was listening to one of his shows on the radio around six years ago and a, a caller a person called in and he said that he was really worried about his friend who had just died because uh, his friend was living an ungodly life. I don't remember what the friend said, how his, in what way his friend was living ungodly. Only that he was living a very ungodly life and he died and now he was worried out of his mind that his friend ended up in hell. And the pastor was saying, oh, don't worry, there's no such thing as hell. So, you know, he's not in hell. It doesn't matter like he, what he did, he's not in hell. And in my mind, I was saying, I can't believe this guy is saying that. I cannot believe this guy is saying that. You know? Now, let me get one thing clear. Uh, there are people, guys, who die. And, like, people, there are people who were living ungodly lives, but who still ended up in hell. Because something happened between, like, moments before they died. The Lord allowed for them, something went on, and the Lord allowed them to repent and to say sorry. And th Those kinds of incidents do happen. And then they end up in, they go to heaven. So we don't know if this guy's friend really is in hell. We don't know. right? So, But that's not the case for everybody. There are, there are more people that die in their sins that, than don't. Okay, So we don't know what happened to him. But anyway, whether he went to hell or not, the more important thing is, well, I mean, that's an important thing. Unfortunately, if he's in hell, it's too bad. But for those who are still alive, what's more important is that this pastor is teaching people that there is no such thing as hell. And he is he's teaching people that God is a liar. 
And now listen, guys, there's also this other this other pastor that I was listening to. No, I, I never listened to him. I, I used to watch Daystar. Uh, I don't watch it anymore. Um, they're a good show, too. I just don't watch it anymore. But there's this one pastor's video that I came across, and he looked very familiar. And I think he was on Daystar. He looked very, very familiar. He, he's a famous pastor. And I don't know his name. <laughs> I don't know his name. And even if I did, I wouldn't tell you his name. So anyway, so this, I was watching last year, just going through some videos. And then I came across this one video. I don't remember what the topic was about. I just started watching this one video. And this one pastor was there. And he was talking about how he no longer believes in hell because some beloved relatives of his died and they died um, after having walked away from God. These were very elderly people that he really, really loved that were, were related to him. And they, they were, he said that they were once very godly people. They were completely, just completely surrendered people to the Lord Jesus Christ. They were just, they were all about God. But then one day, I don't know what happened. He, I don't remember if he, I don't remember whether he mentioned in the video the reason for why these family members walked away from God, but he, all he said was, I mean, all I remember is him saying that one day they just walked away from God and they stayed that way until they died. And so he said that before his family members died and when they were living for God, he did believe in hell. But then after his family members walked away from God and then they died, he said that he chose to no longer believe in hell because he cannot accept the fact that his these beloved relatives of, of his are in hell. Can you believe that? And he's a pastor. He's a pastor. And this this pastor was very anointed. He was very he he was very like a powerful guy, you know? He was he was really powerful. He's very, very anointed. I was so shocked. I was like, how can a person who was who is so um he he was really one of God's great men of God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He was he was a really he was like a powerful guy in God's word. And then for someone like that to suddenly turn away from God's truth just because of a trauma that happened to him and because of the idea that these relatives might be in hell. So now he's gonna start teaching the opposite to God's word. So now he's in danger, and he is so, uh, he's really, uh, what's it called, nothing, nothing can convince him, nothing can change his mind, nothing can change his mind about what he believes in now, and I don't remember what happened ever since he changed his views, um, because, because now he's, uh, he's opened up, I think he, he was kicked out of his church or something. I don't know what happened, but he started a new church and now he's teaching, like he, he started a new church with this new teaching. So I, I think maybe that's what might have happened. He might have started a new church because he was kicked out of the other one for teaching that hell doesn't exist. I think, I don't remember, I don't know, I don't know. So I, that's just what I'm, I think um, might have happened, but I, I'm not sure. But anyway, he, whatever happened, he ended up starting a new ministry with the new teachings, the new views that he has. So I, I, I mean, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Yeah. It's shocking, you know. I'm always having conversations with God, asking him, Father, why do people who start out, these, okay, why do people who start out completely, on, on your side and completely surrendered to you and doing 100% a best job as they can in your eyes and you're so proud of them and you're so pleased with them. Why do people like that, people who, who bring so many, so many souls into heaven, why do people like that suddenly, after so many years, after so many years of them knowing you, after so many years of, of you showing them proof that hell exists, why? 
do they then just one day suddenly decide to turn away from you, the truth? Why? You know, I have these conversations with God. And then he teaches me that these pastors, they allow arrogance to enter into their hearts. And they allow, they allow pride too. Because they, don't, they no longer want to be obedient to what God is saying in the Bible. And so they rather teach their own quote-unquote Bible. And they know the truth, guys. They know the truth. They know that God is real because God has shown them um, real miracles. He's, he's shown them that he's real. He's, he's shown them um, through miracles and signs and, and all kinds of activities. He's shown these, these pastors that God is real. They, they have seen evidence that God is real. So if they've seen evidence that the God in the Bible who says that hell is real... If they've seen evidence from that God, then they also know that God is real and he does send people to hell. You understand what I'm saying? If the God that they believe in, that is in the Bible that says hell is real, if they, be if they believe in, in that God who's shown himself to be real to them, so then why would they choose to turn away from him knowing that he can send people to hell. I just heard God say delusion. I just heard him say that right now, delusion. Okay, so they they willfully uh, place themselves in a delusion because they don't want to accept the realities of things that they are afraid of, like that one pastor that I'm talking about. This pastor chose to no longer believe that there is a hell because he cannot accept the fact that these, these relatives of his that he loved more than life who turned away from God died in their sins and went to hell. He says he does not accept that. He does not accept that his, these family members are in hell. That's arrogance and pride. And he's calling God a liar. So he is going to answer for that. And if you see this person's, the, their composure, they are so arrogantly convinced of who they are right now. Everything that God showed them, everything that God built them up as, all of God's work, all of, all of, all of God's work that he did in them, it's all th they've all thrown it out. It's all gone in the garbage. They no longer acknowledge the person that God built up and created for him. They, they, they no longer acknowledge that person. That person is dead. They, they only acknowledge the person that they created now, which is the arrogant one that no longer believes in what God is saying. Yep. And you know what, guys? One time I saw this uh, priest that really shocked me because uh you know i'm catholic right so when i was watching this one show and they were talking about it was a secular i think it was a secular show where they were just interviewing they just do interviews about any topic and in this i don't remember what what the program which show it was from but they were interviewing they were talking about religion and they were interviewing one of their, their clips, they were interviewing a priest, okay, this is a, I think he was Catholic, because I mean, there's, only, there's usually priests in Catholicism, and I, I don't know any, about any priests in any other religions, I don't know, maybe in Pente Pentecostals, no, they, those are Pentecostal people, they have pastors, I think, um, yeah, I think they have priests in, I think Protestant priests, I don't know, anyway, I don't really pay attention to the other denominations, but Anyway, so I'll just say it's like, because um, I believe it was a Catholic priest because I was freaking out. I was freaking out because I was like, you're a Catholic priest and you're, you know what I'm saying? I was kind of scolding him. <laughs> so he was Catholic. And then the priest, he was dressed in, you know, in, in the, the black suit and the white uh, collar, right? And he said, this is what he said, and I quote, I believe... Um, what am I saying? That I believe. I know this is exactly what he said. Th these are words that I will never forget. 
that he said. He said, we no longer believe in what the Bible says. We no longer take it as literal truth. We no longer take the Bible. Oh, I messed it up. Anyway, so you know what? I take that back. Don't quote me because I believe that I, that I remembered what he said, but I guess I didn't. So don't quote me. But I do remember him saying, we no longer believe in the Bible as literal truth. We no longer believe that it's, that it's anything literal. So then I started scolding him and I'm like, what on earth are you crazy? What are you talking about? What, are, you're a priest? You're a priest and you're saying this? Why are you even a priest and you no longer, and you're saying these things and you, you no longer believe in what God is saying? Are you crazy or something? You are in big trouble. You know, so that really shocked me. Oops, hold on, guys. I, I'm going to try and move because sometimes you see when I position the cam showing the window, when I position the camera, whoop, okay, when I position the camera any certain way, it'll just, it, it focuses by itself and then it starts to like, like, and when it focuses, it starts to zoom in and then zoom out. And then when it zooms out, it kind of shows the window, like the side of the window. And I don't want that to show because I don't want it to disturb you your eyes. So, yeah, and look all ugly. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, so I was so surprised about this priest. That's the first time in my life that I have ever heard of a priest, a Catholic priest. Okay, Catholics are staunch, staunch Christians. Do you know what the word Christian means? It means follower of Christ. Whatever, no matter what denomination that you are in, who, who um, preaches from or teaches from the Bible, the one that, that has God's truth in it, any denomination that teaches from the Bible, doesn't matter what denomination you're from, you are a Christian because you are a follower of Christ. So with Catholics who are such staunch Christians, such staunch, staunch Christians, for this pastor, for this priest to say that he no longer believes in God uh, and in God's literal truth, he's in a lot. I just saw, God just showed me, he just showed me a huge, okay, picture a teardrop, okay? You know what a teardrop looks like. God just showed me an enormous flame in the shape of a teardrop for this priest. It means that he is in danger of fire from hell. It's a huge, huge teardrop. It's, a, it's like um, bigger than a car. That's how big it was. Massive. I just heard God say massive. This priest is in danger of the fire of hell for his teaching because he's telling people that God's a liar. And I also remember him saying, he said, right after he said that he no longer, he says, we no longer uh, believe in the Bible as literal truth. He said that we only use it as a form for um, a, like a, 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 gui a guidance for daily living. What a load of, you know what? doo-doo doo-doo comes out of his mouth because anybody who is going to teach people that God's word isn't real all they know how to spew out of their mouth is doo-doo d-o-o d-o-o doo-doo yep and so he's in trouble I don't even know if he's still alive, but if God showed me that fire, it could be that he's still alive and he's, he has, you know, he's been getting warnings. You know what, guys? A little bit earlier before, what time is it? It is, what time is it? It is 4.14 uh, in the afternoon. It's Monday, August 26, 2019. And about an hour ago, I was feeling so sad, very grieved because of a neighbor that passed away. I will have the video of 
I talk about this neighbor. I'll have that video in the description box for you. I was feeling very grieved. Just suddenly, I, I started feeling very sad because because God showed me where she is, you know, and I felt so bad. I just I felt so bad because you cannot do anything about a person whose soul is in hell. I, I was feeling so grieved just a little over an hour ago and so so I was feeling so sad and yesterday night I was thinking about the times when I used to ask God would you please give all the people in hell a second opportunity and I was asking him and asking him for a long time and then like I was I was asking him for weeks and then I heard God say just recently it was, this was recently when I heard him when he told me this, um, I think it was last year, before the year ended, 2018, in a very gentle, loving, compassionate, like he was, I could feel him hugging me, he, very soft, tender voice, he said, stop asking. And so then I just kept quiet and I stopped asking. And I said, okay, Father, I know. Because guys, one time... I was asking God, uh, this was this was around four years ago, when I, I was, I was like at that time, I ha um, for a long time, I had been asking God for like a, months, I had been asking Him within that year, uh, four years ago, yeah, four, four and a half years ago, I had been asking God, please let me know, I mean, please, Father God, can't you just please give those people just one more chance, just one more opportunity, just just give them one more chance. Just just give them one more chance. And then if they mess up, okay, they mess up. But at least you've given them one more chance. I said, Lord, isn't there a, a way? Isn't isn't there an opportunity? Isn't isn't there like just is is there no more opportunity for them? Isn't there any hope for them? Just just one more opportunity for them, Father God. Just give them one more chance. Is there no more hope for them? Right, so then I, I had been asking him that question and then one day I heard God say, no dear, there is no more hope for them. And then after he said that, I, I just stood there and, and was just thinking about what he said and, and, and I was feeling so sad because when when you hear God say something that is definite, you he he also enables you to like to feel the 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 absolute definite no or yes answer. Like it's either a yes or a no, and there's no changing it. God never changes his mind <laughs> because God doesn't make mistakes. He's not unsure of what he does at any time. He knows what he wants to do every single time and he never goes back he he's perfect right he's he's above perfect so that's why he doesn't he never changes his mind about what he does so when he said to me no dear there is no more hope for them i was so 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 sad right so that's the first time when god said you know there's no more hope for them that's when when he said that that was the first time when god told me no there is like he, he gave me he let me understand no there is no more hope for them and then uh last year when god said stop asking again he he allowed me to experience in my whole soul all my body everything that i made up of he allowed me to feel how definite he was um about no you know no longer about there no longer being another opportunity for those who are in hell now it's finished it's it's finished for them and you know if if you guys can just sit there like just sit where you are after you watch this video if you can just sit there and imagine Imagine the people that are in hell right now. Just imagine them because as 